Hello everyone and welcome to another challenger analysis for, uh, well, the first analysis for patch 9.8. We are today looking at the misfortune player Ales Knetsinek, is that how you pronounce it? I'm not sure, I will leave a link to his match history in the description just to be aware of it. And he is, yeah, he's sitting at challenger in uh, the US server and he goes for the, well, for the go-to builds that the pro players use. It is press the attack, um, overheal, legend alacrity, coup de grace with magical footwear and biscuit delivery. So he goes for blade of the rune king first and then for some lethality items if I recall correctly. And yeah, this build is, oh, I messed that up. I wanted to have this visible scoreboard, yes. Uh, he does go for the uh, for a very early game focus build, and he is currently playing against Ezreal Nautilus. Nautilus is a very strong support in this patch, I think, but they, so Misfortune and Lux, they have more poke. They can avoid the all-ins, which, um, hmm. yeah, level 1 it's not too dangerous, but if they can avoid the all-ins, they should lose the lane, uh, they should win the lane, not lose the lane, obviously. All-in is the enemy win condition in this lane because of Nautilus. And they have a Talia jungle. I haven't seen that one in a while. But yeah, gotta watch out for her, especially after level 6. Uh, blue team got level advantage right now, which means the red team needs to respect their um, 2v2, poten 2v2 potential. But, uh, well, they're so close to the tower that doesn't really matter. So, um... Let's talk about the build for a, for a little while. So, in my opinion, this build is good, but you need to be careful with it. Uh, you, the lower you are on the on on the solo queue ladder, the worse the build gets. Simply because in Master Grandmaster Challenger, where this game is played, games tend to be over very very quickly. And when the game is over quickly, you get a lot of value from early lethality items, and also you. Um, well, you, you kind of circumvent the problem, or you don't run into the problem of misfortune falling off late game, because there will be no, there will be no late game. Uh, very rarely a game is not decided by the 20 minute mark in Challenger ELO. So, if you are Master Grandmaster Challenger, this is a very nice build for you, but if you're, do if you're not, and um, I think 99.9% .9 of the player base are not, then you, in my opinion, should better go with Absolute Focus and Gathering Storm instead of Biscuit Delivery and Magical Footwear. Uh, but that being said, right now it's looking quite nice. Uh, yeah, it's looking, it's looking nice for um, the blue team. They got lane priority, so, uh, well, they cannot walk up because they would lose the 2v2. This is what lane priority means, in case you wonder. They also, oh, that was close. But they also have the scuttle here to warn them from uh, from ganks from the river, so they can actually afford playing that aggressively. But this now expired, and this is why the Lux uh, placed this ward at that very moment because they need some source of vision, obviously. And wow, Nautilus going in one v two into the minion wave—that's obviously very bad. Or it might be a bait. Yeah, they see it though because of the Lux ward. A yeah, nice flash. It was actually, I, I thought Nautilus was playing dumb, but uh, Ezreal teleported right back and Talia was on her way, so this was actually quite a nice bait. They got the Misfortune's flash out of this. The Kindred is on her way as well. Blue team should retreat, definitely. Oh, I can press the... press that button. Um, scoreboard, there we go. Just so you can have a look at the items at all times. Ezreal came back with a Cull and a Sapphire Crystal. I'm pretty sure this gank won't work. Simply because Ezreal is way too mobile. They, and they don't have a reliable source of CC. And Nautilus can also peel quite effectively. Plus there's a huge minion wave, you don't want to gank on minion waves. Just a very consistent source of DPS in the early game.
Yeah, well, Lux is back, obviously. Misfortune needs to be very careful. 1v2. You always need to keep numbers as advantage in mind. If they have more people there, then you're obviously going to lose the fight in most cases. And there was a Talia. Misfortune saw her. So they could be setting up a dive. This is why Misfortune goes very far back. Oh, and Lux didn't see her. Kindred to the rescue. Okay. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter that Lux didn't pay attention. Yeah, but in general, I mean, you know if you have been following this channel for a while that I'm experimenting with all kinds of builds. And in my opinion, even after the... Um, the Blade of the Ruined King nerfs, I think press the attack with uh, Blade of the Ruined King first is a very good build. And you can always play it if you're not sure, if if you don't feel like experimenting with the likes of Death Stance or Bloodthirster. Blade of the Ruined King will always do the job. But that was nice. Let's have a look again. But the key part in this fight was that Nautilus, or that Lux and Misfortune didn't get hooked. And so Nautilus didn't have a way of, yeah. Misfortune sidestepped the hook with a W movement speed. And then they get the kill. And the thing was, had Nautilus landed his hook, then he would have gotten his aftershock, Ezreal would have jumped in with his E, and uh, Lux Misfortune would have probably lost the 2v2. Because they could no longer poke, but were forced with an, with an all-in fight with the Nautilus in melee range, and this is what would have killed them. However, bot lane being so far ahead gives Kindred a nice window of opportunity here to take the dragon. Uh, she must have gone over this wall, right? Because, um... Else she would have been spotted. I think that's what she did. She has this... yeah. This is how she did it. This was scuttled, so red team would have known. Had she uh, gone the long way. Yeah. Very, very well observed by the Kindred. Uh, she saw that bot lane would not be contesting her whatsoever. And even more so, that Misfortune and Lux could come to her aid should the jungler show up. Now they get an Ocean Drake in lane, which is quite convenient because it pretty much means they have infinite resources. And yeah, here we see the Build Water Cutlass Rush. Uh, as far as build order is concerned, you, well, you rush Borg, obviously, but the components, you typically want to have the Cutlass first. So Vamp Scepter being the most important component, so you get your overheal shield ready. And also you need the AD more than the attack speed, which is why you buy the recurve post second. But that's probably common sense for you, if you have been playing Misfortune for a while. Right. Lucy now with a significant HP advantage. Yeah. But he needs to retreat here. It's generally speaking, it's quite hard to catch an Ezreal with a misfortune lane because he can well he can avoid the double ups with uh, or by farming with his Q because he will be standing out of range, right? And also he can poke you with Q without you being able to retaliate. It's quite annoying. Plus, you can jump out of your ultimate. So, yeah, the matchup is not that great in lane, but generally speaking, Misfortune should outscale him. Uh, actually, I'm not sure about that with this build, especially if you don't have Gathering Storm or Absolute Focus. Hmm. Yeah, you, you need to finish early with this build. So far, so good. I'm not able to steal that, right? Yeah. I always press the tab key out of habit because I want to see the scoreboard, but uh, if it's permanently um, visible, then pressing the key will make it disappear. Alright, yeah, now we have Misfortune still chilling in lane, probably waiting for a certain amount of gold. I mean, going back right now wouldn't be bad, because with 700 gold you can afford your recurve bow, which is uh, another 15 damage on hit. If you want an upgraded... well, she has full resources, to be fair, but uh, sh if she wants to go back and get a bit of the Ruined King finished, she needs 1,400 gold. That's still quite a... 
quite a lot of gold she needs. And especially since Lux is right back right now, I would guess it would be better for the Misfortune to back as well. On the other hand, she is pretty safe near her tower. That's debatable. Also, this way you don't give them uh, free platings. Oh, now she backs. Okay, <laughs> I was wondering. Backing there would be a huge mistake. Oh, that's not going to end well, is it? Uh... I'm, I'm not a fan of that flash. I mean, you are under tower here, and... Well, the Akali, she... She probably deals a lot of damage, but she has no armor, and you can auto-attack. As misfortune for lifesteal, and... Um, you know, to get press the attack. And while the tower is focusing Ak Akali, she cannot do anything. And she's visible in the shroud, the tower. Thank goodness. <laughs> I remember the times when that wasn't the case. Alright, but now we got a finished Blade of the Ruined King. Which is helpful, definitely. And this is quite the optimal game for the Kindred, because all the lanes are winning, or even hard winning. And as a jungler, you always want to snowball winning lanes. And when all three lanes are winning, it's pretty much... It, it doesn't matter where you are on the map, you have always a uh, lane to gank. But you never want to be ganking losing lanes as a jungler, because uh, then you just risk Losing the 2v3, or the 1v2. Eating even more gold. Yikes. Yeah, this is, by the way, exactly the reason why you will... Because that this situation occurs in lane is uh, is quite rare. So you don't need Executioner's Calling early. But you see all the healing Olaf gets from Conqueror and from his W. You need uh, Grievous Wounds against him. Because nothing is going to stop him from running you down in the mid-game. And you need to be able to... Oh, he still dies to the minions. What a poor man. But this is... Um, well, when there's an Olaf on the enemy team and an Akali, or e one of the two, that's already enough. I would always get an Executioner's Calling early, simply to stop them from doing stupid things with their healing. With healing in their kit and in their runes. Because Olaf, uh, he doesn't buy lifesteal necessarily, but he has his W and he has Conqueror. And Akali usually has, uh, yeah, she's in the Domination Tree, so she has Ravenous Hunter. And she also tends to rush uh, Hextech Gunblade. And that's just a little bit healing, uh, a little bit too much healing to deal with, in my opinion. But yeah, especially in a snowball -y game like this, going Lethality uh, after Blade of the Rune King is quite nice. You can go crit. And some pro players and some challenger players uh, do this, but in, uh, you typically would like to go crit when you expect the game to go longer. But in challenger elo and when you're already this far ahead, you are you probably have the best bets at winning when you the best shot at winning when you try to go for a snowbally build, such as lethality, obviously. Oof. Okay. Wow. Yeah, Olaf is way too far behind at this point. And it was a 2v1 also. Push this wave back. Push in mid lane, take dragon. That's what you do macro-wise. There we have the back. And uh, you typically, before you go for an objective such as dragon or baron or rift herald, you want to push out the mid wave. Because mid lane, uh, well... There are so many jungle entrances in mid lane, like here, here, here to the river, and uh, on the other side of the map as well. And minions are pretty much walking wards, because they give you vision, right? And when you push in the mid wave, you exactly see where the enemy is moving. Because they also need to catch the wave, and if they want to enter that jungle, they typically go past the wave, and oh my goodness. <laughs> Talking about macro stuff, and... Yeah, this fortune is just casually ulting three man. Oh well. This is also one of the upsides uh, going lethality instead of um, crit. Your ulti will deal more damage in the mid game. 
and also will have a lower cooldown because you have cooldown reduction components in them. So the typical build that pro players go for is, uh, I think I talked about it last Friday? Yeah, last Friday. Uh, they tend to go for Blade of the Rune King into Ghost Blade, into Dust Blade, and then some of them go crit, some of them go um, Edge of Night, follow Dominic's regards, or Motor Reminder. It depends. But Ghost Blade and Dust Blade after Blade of the Rune King seem to be um, pretty standard. And yeah, now they, well, they took this detour over top lane, but now mid lane is pushed in, they can reset, and with the mid lane being pushed, they can take Dragon for free, essentially. This is uh, blue team's Fog of War, so uh, this is this is not like global Fog of War um, or whatever. You, you can only see what blue team is able to see. And yeah, there you have it. With the wave pushed in, see one, two, three members in mid lane. You know, with the push being dissolved, vision also disappears, obviously. But you know where they are, right? This is why it's so important to push in mid lane before you go for objectives in the river. Oh, I pressed the tab key again. I'll just hold it for now. And I want to have a look at this fight. Two v one. Ali gets her, but that's the misfortune. Quite a big shutdown there. One thousand gold. But yeah, mid lane is pushed again, and Misfortune knows Talia is busy with a blue buff, so she just... Oh, she might actually pay for this. Yeah. Gets a dragon stolen. Yeah, that was, that was very ballsy. I mean, Misfortune, he saw that uh, the Talia was nearby, and he was just banking uh, on the fact that she maybe won't go and check, because her team gets pushed in mid lane. And then Misfortune went for the dragon. But it's stolen. She wins the fight because she's so far ahead, but she still loses the dragon to the jungler, which is obviously a misplay. But yeah, having vision is one thing, acting according to the vision, or acting accordingly to the vision, is, uh, is another thing. And Misfortune got a little bit ahead of herself right there. So the thing is, if you know where they are, you can decide if it's a good play to take the dragon or not. And typically, if all of them are defending mid lane, it's a good play to take it. But not if the enemy jungler is nearby the dragon and your jungler isn't. And smite always trumps non-smite, obviously. Oh wait, Fog of War now uh, went... Yeah, every time I rewind, some for some reason Fog of War goes away. <laughs> and I don't know why. I always have to uh, re-enter or re- or again input the Fog of War for one team only. But yeah, there, yeah, you can see the item build. The Blade of the Rune King, Ghost Blade, and uh, this is probably going to be a Dust Blade with Berserker's Greaves. And by the way, one thing to note, um, first of all, this is W Max, obviously. At least that's what I suppose. Yeah, W Max first. And one thing to keep in mind when you play this, when you get to a point where you have um, Blade of the Ruined King plus another attack speed item. So this attack speed item can either be um, a zeal item or it can also be the Berserker's Griefs, right? As soon as you have those, uh, this amount of attack speed, um, you really must not press Q anymore once your W is active because you will lose DPS. Q animation is, uh, it doesn't get shorter with attack speed, so if your attack speed is that high, so if you have, let's say if you have um, 50 to 60% attack speed in items and you have your W active, it's no longer worth it to press Q whatsoever, because, simply because of the fact that, you're, that the Q animation takes too long at this point. The auto attack animation gets shorter and shorter with more attack speed and your Q animation stays the same, so you will lose DPS at some point and this, this breakpoint is two attack speed items. Long story short, if you have Blade of the Ruined King plus Berserker's Griefs, press W and don't press Q while W is active. When you don't have the W steroid anymore, then you can auto-Q auto again and uh, get some profit out of it. But else, no. 
Just auto. Obviously, if the enemy is almost out of range, then you can Q because then it will be the, the last thing you hit them with anyway, and then it doesn't matter that the animation is longer. So this would be one exception. I guess the game is over at this point. Red Team really has zero counterplay. It's also quite sad in, in analyses like these. I cannot really see beforehand whether the game is... Uh, very much one-sided. Well, the scoreboard tells you something, but yeah, probably, probably I could have looked at the scoreboard a little bit more closely and seen that this was a stomp. But I think uh, I could still explain some misfortune tech and some things about item builds and whatnot, and maybe this helped you. I, by the way, don't only analyze challenger games, I also analyze my viewers' games, and if you want me to analyze one of your games, all you need to do is uh, leave me a comment with your server and your summoner name. And also, if you're a channel member, then you have priority above the rest. So uh, yeah, this is how I do it. And if you want to play Misfortune in the current meta, Dead of the Ruined King with Pesty Attack is a pretty safe bet. All right, so let me know what you think. Let me know if you want me to analyze one of your games. And I hope to see you tomorrow. Bye.